obviously the pandemic has been good for the meal kit delivery business. Looking out over the next six to 12 months, given that uh, uncertainty and lockdowns are going to continue, do you think see business getting potentially even better ahead? So we've been very focused on a long-term growth strategy that we started you know, before the pandemic um, actually hit uh, after I joined the company last year. And we were already starting to see the, the fruits of that in Q1 um, with our first sequential quarter over quarter growth. And so really what we saw in the pandemic was an acceleration of some of the trends that we were expecting to see in the second half of the year as far as year over year growth um, with significant growth both, both in customers and in revenue, but also of course in profitability as well. And, um, and that's something that we're really proud of and focused on leveraging as we think about maintaining and developing that customer base going forward, because obviously that, you know, that great quarter has given us in conjunction with the equity raise that we did, um, the flexibility we need in order to execute our long-term growth plan which really was all about building the right products to both engage new customers and retain existing ones. So we're seeing the, the continuation in behavior, not just from COVID-19, but also from people who are trying meal kits and seeing the value in them as an opportunity to continue to actually build on that, use the product work and strategy work that we're doing to both keep and attract new customers going forward as people start to see the, the, the benefits of meal kits. Now, going into this, people had written Blue Apron off, in a way, and the stock had been destroyed. What about when we come out of this, when restaurants reopen? Do you see holding on to those new customers and that demand? We've been doing a lot of internal research, but also looking at the external trends. And the external trends clearly point to the fact that people intend to cook from home more. Um, that this, you know, has reignited their confidence in the kitchen. That's, um, you know, reintroduced them to family time and being able to cook together, uh, being able to eat healthier because you're preparing food from scratch. So for us, we definitely see a continuation of at least a portion of this, if not significantly more, um, as things go forward. Because even as things open up, people are going to be very, very concerned about, you know, too much exposure or spending time in public. But even after that, there's been a fundamental change in habits and people really are seeing the value of cooking. And they're also realizing it's not that hard, especially if you use something like a meal kit where you can remove the planning, you remove the, the you know, significant effort in being able to go procure the ingredients, but then also you remove a lot of the food waste and having to sort of have this refrigerator full of, of ingredients that you don't know what to do with. So, um, so we definitely see some continuation even as things start to open up and things start to change. And we've been managing for the long-term sustainability of that for quite some time. Now, with business booming, that has led to a surge and in just trying to meet that demand. I'm sure that getting these kits prepared and, and employee safety has been a challenge. How are you making sure that the kits are safe, that employees and the people who are putting all these things together are safe? Employee safety is our absolute top priority. We have a lot of employees who go in every day to make sure that these kits get made. Um, the interesting advantage is we were already an FDA regulated and SQF certified facility, which are some of the highest food safety standards in the world. So we already had so many measures in place because of the fact that we're dealing so much with fresh food and, and such a critical role. So the elevated um, sanitation procedures that we put in place in order to protect employees, protect the product um, from any impacts of COVID really were above and, and, and on top of an already very, very rigorous standard. And so that layering really made it easier for us to implement some of the changes we needed to make to keep our employees safe. But that is really the number one priority because obviously we're dealing with something that is coming into people's homes and feeding their families. And so every single thing we do in every step of the process, including even our suppliers going through the same certifications and checks that we go through is a critical part of how we keep our employees safe throughout the process. Now, you were the COO of Etsy before this. You've worked at Alibaba. How do you think more broadly the pandemic will change e-commerce going forward? I think a lot of people are seeing the benefits of all the different ways that e-commerce can help improve their lives. You know, a lot of people who are nesting right now and, 
and just feeling like, okay, my home isn't just where I come and sleep at night after all the things that I'm doing during the day. This becomes my, my workspace, my social space, my, my sort of sanctuary at the same time. And so I think that investing in things like, you know, decorating and making your home a better place, but then also investing in the food and investing in those mealtime moments and really creating much more mindful moments around things like food are really top of mind for a lot of people. So I think e-commerce in general has been, um, has benefited from the fact that people are seeing the need to bring things home. I think the next thing that you're going to see is more and more evolution, and this is something we think a lot about, of where do these products come from? Where does my food come from? What is the environmental impact of what I'm doing? So that's a big part of why we focus not only on the quality of the product, the quality of the meats, the quality of the produce, but we're also focusing a lot on food waste and how do we lower that impact as much as possible, which is why meal kits were deemed a third lower carbon footprint than going to the grocery store because we reduce waste at every part of the supply chain. So I think that's the next phase you're going to see in e-commerce is how can you continue to minimize the waste that comes from e-commerce while also taking advantage of the opportunities um, for how e-commerce can actually help serve families and, and people at home.